priests, which are gods. Now, this is a very powerful, simple statement. And, and who's making this statement again? Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus is uh, symbolized in the Bible by what animal? By a lamb. So here you have a statement from the lamb. Here you have a statement from Jesus Christ. And he's talking about the relationship between uh, the things of Caesar and the things of God. Two different things. And is he putting them together as one or is he separating them? He's dividing them into two. Jesus said, give to Caesar the things which belong to Caesar. And give to God the things which belong to God. He is separating Caesar from God. And the things of Caesar from the things of God. you see that? And Caesar represents the government. And the things of God represent religion. And here is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, making one statement where he is clearly separating the things of government from the things of religion. It's a principle of the Lamb. It's Jesus' principle. It's a principle of religious freedom. Uh, God wants people in government, of course, to have a spiritual life and to have a relationship with him. But when it comes to the, the authority of government to implement laws... Uh, government only has so much right. It can only go so far. And government does not have the right to enforce the things that belong to God. That is God's sphere, not the sphere of government. And Jesus is separating them. Now, let's go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13, and let's again look at verse 11. 13, 11. I beheld, John said, as he looked into the future in a holy vision, I beheld another beast or nation coming up or rising into power out of the earth or wilderness, opposite from the sea, representing all the nations. And he had two, representing a division, two horns, neither which have crowns, two horns like a lamb, like Jesus, showing the principle of Christ, separating government from religion, the things of the church from the things of the state. But then what happens? In verse 11, it says that he will speak like what kind of an animal? Like a dragon, right? This power, this nation will eventually uh, deny the principles of the lamb and it will speak as a dragon. I was talking to Alan about this a little while ago, and I said, Alan, uh, what's your opinion on this? Do you see this, this um, nation as being a hypocritical nation from the start that professes one thing but actually speaks because it's different uh, when it speaks like a dragon? Or do you see this as a, as a transition that takes place within this nation? Do you see the nation... Uh, being a hypocrite from the start, or do you see it changing as time goes on? And his response, which is probably the same way that I would see it, uh, is that, that the nation changes. And at the very end of time, it denies its fundamental principles, and, and it speaks, speaks like the dragon. And the ultimate dragon is who? It's the devil, right? The ultimate dragon is the devil himself. That's exactly right. Now, go down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, eventually, this beast will cause... Now, when it says cause, what does that imply? Cause implies force. So this nation is going to use force. He will cause. Some Bibles say he will compel. And then when it says he will cause, what's the next word? He will cause all. Right, he will cause all. And what does that imply? How powerful is this nation? How powerful does this nation that came up out of a wilderness area that at some point started out small, as nations do, but eventually this nation gets so powerful that it causes everyone to receive the mark of the beast? What does that tell you about the uh, power of this nation Eventually, it's a, it becomes a superpower, doesn't it? It's a superpower nation. And it says, he will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, 
to receive. And what does what do people receive? They receive a mark right in their right hand or in their foreheads that nobody can buy or sell unless they have the mark. Now, uh, when does the mark of the beast come? Is the mark is the mark of the beast something that happens in history behind us? Or is the mark of the beast an end time event that takes place right before the return of Jesus Christ? It's, a, it's an end time event, right? It's something that happens at the very, very end. Now, let's just put, let's just put these pieces together. We have a beast, which represents what? A nation in Revelation 13, 11. And it comes out of the earth, which represents a wilderness area, right, in opposition to the sea. It has two horns, which would be a division of power, like a lamb, like Jesus Christ, showing it has certain Christian principles separating government from religion, right? But eventually it speaks uh, like a dragon. It uses force. It becomes a superpower, and it causes people all around the world to get the mark of the beast at the very end of time. Now, let me just ask you, how many nations, if you look at history, and if you look at where we are today, how many nations fit the puzzle pieces? If you put piece by piece by piece by piece together, how many nations are there that fit the puzzle pieces? Are there three? Are there five? Are there two? How many options do we have? There's only one superpower on planet Earth right now. Only one. There's only one nation that has risen up out of a wilderness area that has become a superpower that separates government from religion and that is based upon the principle of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and that is the United States of America. We're it. There is no other nation that fits this prophecy. None other. And so that's why I believe uh, unequivocally. I don't believe it because I was raised in a certain church or because this is what I've always been taught or because my mother told me or my dad told me or because this is what my church believes. I, I don't believe it for any of those reasons. I believe it because I believe this book. I believe the Bible. And to me, the evidence is overwhelming. There is no other nation on planet Earth that fits this prophecy other than the United States of America. And as I read my Bible, it's becoming more and more clear to me that the mark of the beast is something that is going to be enforced by this country leading out and then going around the world. And it's going to be enforced during a time of crisis, during a, a time of intense conflict. When something big hits, some crisis hits, and as a result of the crisis, the principles that we have held dear for so long, these principles are given up, and a change takes place. It looks like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. I hate to say it, but uh, even though I love America and I, you know, I love this country, uh, we are living in the belly of the beast. The second beast of Revelation 13, 11. We're there. We're in prophecy. And it just baffles my mind that so many uh, Bible scholars, and I've, I've read their, some of their writings. I've heard them say some of these things on the radio, on TV, where they'll say, do you think America has a place in prophecy? No, America's not there at all. But we are there. We're clearly there in Revelation 13. We're the biggest superpower on planet Earth. We're the only superpower on, on planet Earth. Uh, now, I've been doing a lot of thinking as to what events might lead to this kind of a crisis? Um, and I'm going to move away from history right now. I'm going to talk about what's happening in, in our world. It's, it is a very strong possibility. I mean, I'm not a prophet, and I can't say for sure. But it is a very strong possibility that the whole issue of Islam might have a lot to do with the final crisis. Now, Islam may not be the beast of Revelation 13, but it could become the mechanism that pulls the trigger, that leads to the 
to the final crisis. Um, was recently involved in quite a discussion uh, about the whole issue of domestic